Hey, what's going on guys? Reed here and I'm back with another tech video. Now this time we're gonna be talking about a topic that most people find have sometimes have trouble getting to work. I will help anyone who ha has any trouble, but this time it is not Hackintosh related or we're not gonna be using the Lenovo over here. Instead, this time we are going to be using my little test computer down here. And we are gonna be doing, this, this video is going to be how to get Mac OS High Sierra running on a Windows virtual machine in VirtualBox. So for this demonstration, I will be using Windows 10 and I'm gonna be downloading Mac OS High Sierra. You're gonna need a real Mac for the part of this process. You're also probably gonna want a relatively big USB. I would say maybe eight 16 gigs, 16 recommended. This is a 64, so this is way more, but I use this for other purposes too. But, so yeah, we're gonna go ahead and jump right into this. And just a note, this virtual machine that, I'm, that we're doing should be able to update itself. You should be able to update it or upgrade it to Mac OS Catalina from the virtual, virtual little Mac that we're gonna be getting to run. Just a, That's just a quick little note, and also some other features may not work iMessage, FaceTime, because you're because Apple won't, won't recognize it as a real Mac. But anyways, we're gonna go ahead and jump right into this. And so yeah, I'll be right back. Okay guys, I am back. We're on the Mac now. Now the first thing you're gonna want to do is get your USB ready. We're not creating a Mac OS install USB. Don't confuse me for that. We're instead gonna be copying some files from it get to get it over the Windows machine. So first you're gonna want to go to applications, utilities, disk utility. I think we can eject that. That's just a thing from the installer. But you're gonna wanna go to your USB. Now, of course, I had it formatted for Windows earlier. I'll go ahead and erase it. Click erase when selected on the disk. You doesn't really matter what this is, but don't select Apple Partition Map. I'll do GUID. Make it selected to be XFAT if possible. Because Mac OS Extended or APFS is not gonna work on this is not going to work on the Windows computer. XFAT will work with both. Now, FAT depends. I don't know for sure. I know FAT32, most likely you won't be able to copy the file to the USB if you do that. So once again, XFAT recommended. Only use MS-DOS FAT because it may not work. Go ahead and format that. There's nothing important I need on there. It'll format with XFAT. It doesn't matter what name you put. I just leave it as untitled. You don't need to worry about all this information unless it says there's an error. So you can press done. I'm going to leave DSB in while we do the other steps. So for High Sierra, we're going to, you can't go to the app store to download it. Instead, you have to go to, you have to go here and Google Mac OS High Sierra download. Apple has a download link for older Mac OS versions, some of them at least, on their support page, just in case they're not compatible with Catalina. They go as far back as Yosemite, I believe. But basically, High Sierra is one of them, so you can't get it from the App Store. It's recommended to, rec of course, Apple recommends you can upgrade to Catalina instead. But we're going to use this link here. It'll get you to the Mac App Store. Go ahead and load. And here it is. This is the one. You can't search this. Don't get me wrong. You cannot search this to find it. If I go back here and I search Hi Sierra, it doesn't pop up. You have to use this link. So it should work because it just did. Don't know why it's okay. There we go. You're going to go ahead and press the get button. It'll download it, yes. Now, this may take some time. From what I've seen, it is smaller than than Catalina, but this may take some time, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut out the film. I'll be back when this is finished. Okay guys, I am back. You will notice that when you open this, or when it opens itself, it fails to open because it says it's too old. That is if you're running Catalina. Perfectly fine. So your next step, is we're gonna take a file called basesystem.dmg using some commands. It can be found within this package. You can find it by following these steps. So 
right here. We're going to take this. If you mount it, you can. It shouldn't hurt anything, but we don't have to. I'm just going to show you what I mean. If you mount it, you'll notice it's got like a copy of the install application, and it's kind of like a partial installer. It'll download the rest from the internet. These are the skeleton files, as they're called. So we're going to copy those to an to and just convert it to a DM from a DMG to an ISO. So basically you're just going to run these commands and go ahead and go to applications, utilities, terminal. I'm just going to go ahead and command C, command V them. Just got to run them in order. It will go ahead and create a CDR image of a size of about seven gigabytes because this is M is for megabytes. We're just going to go ahead and run these commands. It's a lot of typing, I know. I get the huge advantage of copying and pasting. But basically, it's a lot of typing, but you'll get there eventually. Just don't make any mistakes, because if you make a single mistake or change a single letter, it is not going to work. That's happened to me many times. So basically, then this is the CDR. Go ahead and detach it, basically. It will eject it. Now we're going to come, this is the command that's important, because this converts it to an ISO, which won't take too long. It actually doesn't take as long as it seems it would, because the image is only like 400 megabytes. It's not like the... 8 gigabyte full installer of Catalina where it's like got everything that it needs without needing to connect to the internet. This one will connect to the internet and download it, I believe. Then this command here, which is what we're going to run next when that finishes, which shouldn't be too long from now, will be the one that will move this new ISO to the desktop. Because right now it's in slash temp. Here you are, you, here you have it, your ISO. You'll notice if you mount it, you have the same exact contents as the base system one I showed you earlier because we copied it right over. So now we're you need to go ahead and copy this to your USB. Whoops. Yeah. yeah, okay, that's exactly what I wanted. So it'll go ahead and copy it. It's probably going to take some time, especially since this is a USB 2.0. So I'll be back when this is finished. Okay hey guys, I am back. We're here on the test desktop now. So we are gonna go ahead and do some VirtualBox stuff. So first things first, you're gonna need to install VirtualBox. Find it in Chrome, virtualbox.org. You can download the latest, should work just fine. Now, for this tutorial, you're not gonna wanna use, try to run, install Catalina on it. You want to install High Sierra, then upgrade to Catalina. I'll be recording a video on how to do Catalina later. But if you, if you upgrade to Catalina, it should work. So go ahead and open VirtualBox. I recommend you can install the extension pack if you want. We're going to create a new virtual machine. I'm going to call it High Sierra. And now this, you should be able, if, if this is available, select it. If not, don't worry about it. I've got plenty of RAM. I've got 32 gigabytes, so I'm, I, can, I can give it a good 16 gigabytes. You're going to want to make sure to create a virtual hard disk now is selected. This folder is probably set by default to VirtualBox VMs and your users folder. I set it to somewhere different just because I've got a, if you look here, I've got an ex, a different hard drive that I can store them on. But basically, before you do all this, you're going to want to make sure you've taken, I assume you know this, your ISO for High Sierra. You don't want to mount it and copied it to a place on your hard drive from your USB. In this case, that's downloads for me. Done that. So you can go ahead and press create a virtual hard disk now. Now, if this is in guided mode, you should still be able to follow these steps. I like expert mode. I'm gonna be able to give it probably a good 72 gigabytes. It's got a 160 gig hard drive. Set it to VDI. You can set it to fixed size. It will be faster. Like fixed size will be faster, but it will take a lot, of, a lot more space on your hard drive because it allocates it ahead of time. So I'm gonna select dynamically allocated, make sure it's set to VDI, make sure this location's correct, set to whatever size you want. This is a little much. You might be able to, you, you can probably get by with 25 gigabytes. So I'm gonna press create. Here's our virtual machine. Now we're gonna do some configuration here. 
Shouldn't have to mess with any of this. Head to system. Uncheck floppy. Make sure you uncheck floppy. Go here, make sure you have at least two processors allocated. I'm just gonna allocate four for the time being. Make sure this is at 100. Under display, you're gonna wanna set to 128 megabytes. It actually won't hurt, even though it's a lot, because it's just using the same monitor. Under storage, right here, you're gonna go here, choose a disk file, and you're gonna select your ISO that you got from the Mac. Should be able to save that now. Then close VirtualBox, so these next steps are not gonna work. But you're gonna wanna go here, Windows System, Command Prompt, right click it, click Run as Administrator, then press Yes at the prompt. And basically, here's our command prompt. You're gonna type all these commands in order. It's a lot of typing. I'm just gonna paste, copy and paste them. But I will leave this up. You can pause the video here if you'd like to go ahead and type those. But you have to run them in order. If you don't run them in order, it's not gonna work. These are basically just some commands we're running to change some internal data that will go ahead and make it to where it believes it's on a real Mac. Here's, here's a pretty long one. This is a longer one. Okay, I'm almost done with this. Okay, now you should be able to close the command prompt. You shouldn't see any any input, like you shouldn't see any output to it. it if the command will just run. So I'm gonna go ahead and close that. Now we can open VirtualBox and have the moment of truth. We can go ahead and start the virtual machine, see if it works. You're gonna see a lot of text. Go ahead and press cancel on that. You can see a lot of text telling you all sorts of stuff. Ignore it, unless something stays and hangs for a long time. You can ignore it, even if it's an error. There's gonna be some errors, of course. But this is gonna take its time and should boot. It booted when I did it. So let's see. Okay, yeah, it's working. This is what I mean. This is what I mean when you see a lot of text. You should be able to close these up there. But the reason I don't want you guys running Catalina trying to install Catalina onto a virtual machine with these instructions without upgrading it to Catalina is because I tried it. It will cause you to, it'll cause it to reboot infinitely and you'll keep getting a kernel panic or a crash. It does not work. This usually doesn't take that long, so I'm going to leave, leave it running. So as you can see, there are some errors, especially where it says launch agents and stuff like that. Once again, you don't have to worry about it. It might take just a minute or two. Usually shouldn't take a long time. Like my general rule here is that wait five minutes for to see if it keeps moving and if it doesn't, then you've done something wrong. Judging by the text I'm seeing, I can tell it's getting close. Quick little note while this is running. I just want to let everyone know that some features, once again, some features may not work on this. You should get the basic stuff. So
such as a desktop, a software update. I know those work. I tested them. But some, some things like iMessage, FaceTime, and stuff will not work. So now it's loading. It's almost there. When you see this Mac logo after all the text, you'll know it's like in the final stage. And so basically what it's doing is it's running from the ISO right here. And this is what it uses to boot. We're gonna be installing it. Now this part tends to take a while. I'm gonna go through all the steps with you guys. And, I, and I'm also going to have a couple more videos coming out for how to do Catalina, just install Catalina. And I might do one with an older version like Snow Leopard. Just, just for fun. Just as a little experiment. Just kind of see what would happen. So, let's see. I think it's, I think it's working. So, just gonna, I'm going to wait just a minute or two longer. Let's check this. I want to see how long I've been... Okay. Here we go. You'll notice it will load up. It should take you to a screen like the Mac OS recovery. Just like we did on the Hackintosh. On the Hackintosh, it would tell you Mac OS recovery and you'd have a few options. Let's see, this one seems to be going a little slow. So go ahead and select your language. I'm English. This one seems to be running a little slower than when I did it. But I've got a feeling that's just because of the fact that I'm recording at the same time. So you'll see all these options. We're going to start by going to Disk Utility. Because we need to format our hard drive or a virtual one with Mac OS Extended. Go here, press Erase. Call it whatever you want. I would prefer you to call it Macintosh Hard Drive. Make sure it's set to Mac OS Extended Journal, GUID partition map. Go ahead and press erase. You shouldn't see anything happen except it will erase it. Shouldn't this, yeah, it doesn't take long. You sh after, after it says it's complete, you can close this. Go here, reinstall Mac OS. Go ahead and press continue. Shouldn't have to do anything any different from the normal installation here. But you can press agree. You have to actually. You have to agree. Select this disk. Press install. Now this part is going to take some time. Like as you can see, it's going to take longer than just nine minutes because it has to reboot and do a bunch. So this will take a while, so I'm going to cut this out. I'll be back when we're back on the setup screen. If it ever reboots and you get to an internal shell with the yellow text and stuff, make, just make sure FS1 is selected. And we, you can type some commands to get to that. But it most likely won't happen as long as you're running the latest version of VirtualBox. It shouldn't take you back to the installer at all after it reboots. If it does for you, let me know in the comments. I can definitely fix it. So I'll be right back. Okay, guys, I am back. We're in the setup screen now. Go ahead and just select your region. I'm US. Then so it's my keyboard layout and go ahead and press continue to that. You can read all this if you want. It's just some data and privacy stuff. You're gonna wanna make sure don't transfer any information now selected. You can sign in with an Apple ID. I'm going to go ahead and try to. It doesn't always work. Considering the fact that. Just considering the fact that it doesn't. It's not considered a real Mac. We'll see if it works. Either it's taken a long time, or I forgot to enter the, or I entered the password wrong. But most of the time it won't work. Okay. 
loading yep perfectly normal coming through right now go ahead and verify that okay it's loading now this is usually where it will tell you that it can't Right here is where it will, if it fails, it will say like your this Mac cannot sign in with an Apple ID or something like that. If it says that, then you know that it's not gonna work. But it's always worth a try. Okay, shouldn't take too long. Here's where it will say. There, there it is. This is what I mean. You will get this sometimes, and you won't be able to sign in with an Apple ID. Not at, at least not until we get to the desktop. You have to accept the license agreement. Go ahead, and create an account. Account name, home folder, set the password. I'm not going to type a hint. Go ahead and create the account. Alright. Should be, should be able to do this step because it's a computer account. It's not a cloud account, kind of like an Apple ID. So this step should work. So should, there you go. You can just press continue for express setup. You don't, I don't have to customize any of this. Should say setting up your Mac. Get ready for it, guys. We're about to be taken to the desktop. This part doesn't take long at all, usually. Get ready for it. There's a little spinny rainbow wheel thing. Yeah. Usually indicates a freeze, but in this case it's not. All right. So just takes a minute for everything to load usually. It might be a little faster on your end. This is probably just because of the fact that I'm recording at the same time, but still 32 gigabytes of, mem gigabytes of memory should be enough. You might have to go through this, not a big deal. Just identify your keyboard. It will work. This part definitely works. Just press just follow the instructions. Select this if it's any different. And you can press done. So you'll notice now you have a fully working Mac. Or at least not really a Mac. A virtual one at least. Might be a little slow at first. Might, might improve over time. I think it's just because my video memory is kind of low. I mean, 128 megabytes is enough. It's just that it's using some of that from recording. But yeah, you should have a full working Mac now. So yeah, guys, I think I'm going to leave the video here. Everyone, thanks for watching. Expect some Snow Leopard or Catalina coming out soon. Just remember that you can upgrade this to Catalina just through the same steps you would a real Mac. So yeah, I will see you guys in the next video.